All right, Michael, thank you for joining me again. So uh, I'm going to review a little bit what we talked about last time. Um, we saw that um, the, the, the word matter, uh, uh, its etymology is wood. And then there was a first abstra abstraction from the word wood to signify just um, building material. That was a very interesting point to me. And uh, uh, I had a question about that in the yeah. Leighton article that you sent me. Okay. Uh, he spelled the word uh, matter mu lambda eta, which I think must be a misprint. Uh, Hewle, so, so the, 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 the great, you know, uh, it, it's not, I, I think the letter that renders H uh, in, in the typo, I, I can't remember which Greek letter or how, what its representation is, but it's essentially Hewle. Hula or Haile or however you want to call it. Yeah, it may be a misprint. I mean, I, I can't remember. I know that I transcribed that paper from uh, um, uh, an internet source. It's 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 in the public domain. So so, but that's that's the word which okay. is now it's Haile. It's that's how it's uh, uh, that's what Leuten refers to. Okay. Anything else or? No, that's all. Okay, all right. So, so, so um, the first abstraction is is to to give uh, a more general meaning to that word beyond wood, just for as building material, and that's that's the 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 concept of uh, matter that the uh, initial the first uh, Greek philosophers latched on to um, to try to to discover or or account. Um, uh, for first principles of nature, um, you know, to, as, as building blocks, you know, it, it, are there any building blocks um, in nature that explain the diversity of, of all, these, um, all these things around us? Okay, so matter that out of which something is built, so there's this concept of building block, which uh, carries in it the notion of potency. Um, but uh, I finished the lecture last time by saying that if, if we posit that there is one or more fundamental building, building blocks that explain the diversity and inter, inter, interchangeability in nature, uh, that creates a problem because if there is a specific, a specific wood, a specific matter, a specific something, or, or certain specific things that are fundamental building blocks, uh, the problem of change remains. Um, and there are many problems which we will go over when we go and examine these pre-Socratic philosophers in, in more depth. But one of them would be, for example, you know, what happens when the wood itself changes to something else? So if you're going to posit as a building block water or air or fire or, you know, some kind of solid matter, or even if you don't describe it in any... Um, um, anything that's familiar to us, like you know, water and and uh, or, or or stones or whatnot, whatever it is, if it has a determination and if it's if it changes itself, you know, we we still have to account for something uh, that persists in the change, right? And uh, and that for Aristotle was a problem that you know, the moment you if you decide that your fu fundamental principles of of nature are going to be these determined things, uh, you still have a problem to, to explain change. And we'll get into that later. Again, here I'm just introducing essentially the, the Aristotelian philosophy without uh, just touching on a little bit uh, of its distinction from the other philosophies, but uh, we'll get into this later. So the problem of change remains if, if you conceive of matter as building blocks, okay? So for Aristotle, matter really has to be pure potency. It has to be really completely indeterminate to explain substantial change, to explain one thing becoming a different kind of thing altogether. You know, the armadillo becoming the carcass or the water becoming, becoming air. You know, I mean, if, if the, the most essential element, element is going to be something else, there has to be some substratum that uh, remains in the change. Okay, so if matter is what connect, connects the different things in nature, each with its own form and determination, matter itself must be entirely indeterminate. Okay, and, and for Aristotle, matter is, is no particular thing. Okay, um, so matter is not a thing. Uh, 
it is a principle of being and becoming. And, and in this lecture, I'm going to uh, elaborate a little bit on this idea of what a principle is. Okay, so it's a principle of being and becoming. And as I said, I think I mentioned it before, it's not a complete principle, it's an incomplete principle of being and becoming because substantial form is the other uh, side of the coin. You know, substantial form is also an incomplete principle of being and becoming. Matter does not exist by itself, it is actualized by form, okay? So it, it's just the conjunction of matter and form that give rise to existing things, okay? And therefore, matter is not directly knowable. I cannot look around and find pieces of matter floating about or under the mattress or under the microscope or whatnot, because precisely matter does not exist in itself. It exists in existing things, okay? And, and therefore, and we, we will go into this in more detail later on, each real thing, each substance is composed of two real uh, intelligible principles, matter, which is the principle of potency and form, which is the principle of act. Okay, and I highlight here that they are real, meaning they are really out there in the world. They're not just in our mind. You know, it's not just uh, uh, a, a product of the mind to explain things. You know, the material principles are out there operating um, in 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 the changing world. Okay, so principle we use here. I, I've used it over and over uh, again. The, the this term of of principle, and and again in our common usage. Nowadays, uh, if we say, if we talk about principles, it, it may conjure the idea of uh, a rule or something, you know, he's a man of principle, you know, uh, he, he's a, a guy who follows some rules and so forth. And, and that's not really, it's distinct from what uh, in philosophy here, how we use the term principle. Principle, this is the definition that Aquinas give, is really uh, that from which something proceeds in any way. Okay, because principle, principia in Latin, prince beginning. Okay, so it's that from which something proceeds in any way. And when he says he uses that, the term that, because he doesn't want to say a principle is the thing from which something proceeds in any way, because thing philosophically, again, we're gonna we're gonna use the term thing, we'll go over that later on to denote substances, to denote existing things, right? Things that are out there, you know? So, so it, it's even more general than, than, than a thing, it's just that, that from which something proceeds in any way. So let's give examples of principles. You could say that the cow is the principle of the milk because the milk proceeds in some way from the cow, okay? Now the cow is a thing, okay? So being a principle does not mean that you have to be a thing, but you can be a thing. You know, a principle can be a thing, okay? Uh, so the, the cow is the principle of the milk. Uh, these are examples from uh, uh, Michael Dodd's book. Um, the coffee, uh, the coffee can, sorry, the coffee can is the principle of the coffee that you scoop into, into the coffee maker, okay? A mathematical example would be the point is a principle of the line, okay? So really, the uh, principle, all it means is that it implies an, an order, some kind of order. If we see an order, whether it's a chronological order, whether, whether it's an order in time, or whether it's, um, as we will see more, more, more clearly later on, a metaphysical order, something that comes first, and then something that comes after that, you know, whatever comes first is the principle of whatever comes after that. Okay, so a principle is if I go back again to the, the definition, that from which something proceeds in any way. Okay, so that's what a principle is. So matter is a principle of being because being proceeds from matter and, and so, so does form. So both matter and form are both principles of being because being and becoming proceeds from these principles. Okay, now principle versus cause. The definition of a cause philosophically here is that from which something proceeds with dependence on being and becoming. Okay, so a cause conjures the notion of dependence in the, in the sequence, in the order, so that whatever comes, you know, if, if, um, if something is a cause of something else, 
then there's a dependence of the effect, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever follows is an effect on the cause, okay? You can see that causes are principles. So a cause is a subset of a principle because a principle, if you recall, is, is simply that from which something proceeds in any way, okay? But a cause is that from which something proceeds with dependence on being and becoming, okay? So a cause is a subset of, of principles. So principle is just a very, very general term that Acknowledge, acknowledges that the, there is in nature or there are orders, okay, things are ordered, okay, and we're going to use the term principle to highlight just anything that comes first in an order or that comes before whatever else proceeds, okay, but we'll specify that causes are things where whatever, whatever comes subsequently is dependent on the principle, okay, so it's, it's a principle with dependence um, on on uh, on being and becoming. So uh, this uh, I, I think it's helpful to 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 have this this chart, just the, the the division of principle, if you will, in the philosophy of nature. I've adapted this book from Father Dodd's. Uh, I mean, this graph from Father Dodd's book uh, in the philosophy of nature. So principles um, can be extrinsic or intrinsic, and. Uh, you know, we're, we're focusing here on on matter and form as being principles of uh, uh, of of nature. Okay, um, we will see that among the intrinsic principles are the efficient cause and the final cause. We'll get into into that later. For example, um, if um, uh, if uh, uh, the um, the artist shapes the clay into becoming a statue. Right, so the artist is the efficient cause of the statue, right? So it's an extrinsic cause of of the statue is the coming to be of the statue. The final cause we'll go into that, you know, later. It has to do with, uh, you know, with with ends, you know, the end of of a being. Uh, I don't want to get into this uh, later, but intrinsic causes of be of of being or in intrinsic principles of being um, are going to be. Considered for you know either in the more general metaphysical uh, realm or in the physical realm, uh, I will touch on this distinction here in a second. But in the physical realm, we have what we have been talking about mostly: the intelligible principles of being, which are the material cause and the formal cause. Okay, we so we we we've come to the conclusion that there has to be, you know, in nature, principles of of um, of, of being in order to uh, hold on to our assumptions that the world is intelligible, right? That was our, our uh, departing point. And these are our matter and form, okay? There are also in the physical world uh, sensible or perceptible um, uh, principles of being, which when we get into it are the elements. So when Aristotle disagrees with his predecessors invoking the, uh, you know, water as being, um, a first principle of being, uh, or you know, fire and earth. You know, he, he doesn't deny that on a sensible level, you know, th there may be, you know, basic fundamental building blocks. Okay, and eventually he will, uh, you know, treat and and outline uh, his own theory of of the elements of the sensible building building blocks of the world. Okay, so that yes there can be fundamental elements you know whether it's water air fire and and um, and earth or you know whatever it is you know they will be that so he doesn't deny that reality but this is not f fundamental the, the really the more fundamental ones are going to be matter and form and they're um and and here they're they're listed in this chart uh, uh here but they're also on a more general and metaphysical level uh, they are the principles of act and potency. Um, the reason we separate is because the physical world may not be the entirety of everything that is, okay? So if you're going to conceive of things in a more general way, even beyond the physical, you know, then, then uh, at a very much more general way than, than the principles of act and potency operate, okay? But so, so this is, uh, I, I think, a chart that... Um, is worth knowing about from the beginning. And then as we go through the course, we can sort of uh, have that in mind and maybe I'll bring that slide up, you know, but I just wanted to situate 
uh, a little bit matter and form in, in this this um, this division of of uh, causes and principles that uh, you know will will form the, the 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 framework of understanding in the uh, in the Aristotelian philosophy of nature. Okay, so essentially, uh, so far uh, in, in last lecture and this lecture and the next couple of lectures, we're just focusing on this. Uh, principle of being okay this first principle this really very fundamental principle of being pertaining to the, the physical world okay not necessarily pertaining to to the entirety of of uh, whatever is okay um, so matter as a principle prime matter is a first natural physical principle of being and becoming and we will see when we when we uh uh, talk about you know when we have our, our little lessons on substantial form that substantial form is also a first natural phys physical principle of being and becoming okay and that's it for for this lesson any questions here before we uh, we proceed i'm gonna next lesson i'm gonna dig a little deeper into the properties of prime matter um, for the next two lessons you're good here no questions, yeah. All right. Okay, so let me stop and uh, we'll come back.